of this first unit networks here in this topic we are going to discuss what is the definition of networks and what is the criteria of about networks and what are the different types of networks that is different types in the sense that the communication type so as far as network is concerned so the network is the interconnection of set of devices capable of communication so we are having a different set of devices the electronic devices which is having a communication then those devices can be interconnected together and that communication system is called as a network so in other definition a device can be a host or the host can be represented as an end system or it is also host can be called as a end system either it may be host may be a sender or it may be a receiver and here this host machine may be a larger computer the large computer in the sense that it is having a for example it is a server so where the processing capability as well as storage capacity of the server is very huge for example we can say that super computer super computer may be having more memory for storing information as well as it is having a more processing power that is within fraction of second whatever the calculations or whatever the program you are giving it will be executed or it can be a desktop or it can be a laptop or it can be a workstation so when you talk about workstation there are two types of workstations are there one is called a dumb terminal and another one is called as a intelligent workstation so as far as dumb terminal is concerned you can make a request all storage and processing will be done by the server so whatever you are typing in your uh, that is a system or it will pass the information to the server for storing as well as for processing that is called a dumb terminal and workstation is nothing but it is having a little bit memory for storing limited amount of memory as well as limited amount of processing power then it is called as a workstation so or it may be a cellular phone or any security system so in the security system in the sense that uh, let us assume that for monitoring a forest we are uh, installing a sensors so if suppose a fire took place then automatically the sensor will observe the temperature and it crosses the one particular limit or threshold point it will communicate to the server the server is available in the city so based on the uh, input of uh, the sensors the server will take a remedial actions it will by seeing that uh, the activity in the ser uh, server the uh, that is uh, the people will take a emergency situation and they were the fire engines can be called for uh, right uh, uh, that is stopping the fire so these type of things is are called or connected together is called as a network and in this uh, device uh, as far as the component or device which is available in a uh, network will be connected through a router so router is nothing but a another physical device so which will store as well as it will identify the route so it is a it is having a storage capacity as well as it is having a forwarding capacity it will identify the route between the source and destination machine so which connect the network to other network or a switch the switch can also be possible to establish a communication between the nodes which is present in same network or different network and by using these type of devices routers or switches we can connect the systems together and we can called as a network and here it need a modem or modem is nothing but modulator and demodulator so by using a modulator we are converting our the digital data into analog signal and demodulator is the analog signal can be converted into digital format for conversion purpose we are using modulator and demodulator which changes the form of the data and so on so these are the devices or intermediate devices router switch mod modem these are the devices can also be connected for enhancing or improving the communication between one system to 
another system that is called as a network so these devices in a network are connected using either a wired cable or wireless communication so wired means you can use different types of cable we are going to discuss what are all the different types of cables are available and also by means of wireless communication that is nothing but air that is by using a frequency so where we are going to discuss about what is radio frequency or that is a radio wave or that is we are going to discuss about uh, micro waves so these are the communication mechanism either it may be a wired communication or it may be a wireless communication so when we connect two computers at home either plug and play router we have to create a network although it is a very small so we are having two systems in our home we wanted to communicate this information information between these two computer then we can use a router which will be acting as a plug and play plug and play in the sense that whenever we need we can insert or uh, uh, whenever we don't want we can use it as an individual system also we can connect it together and we can process or at the same time we, if suppose we don't want to establish a con uh, connection between the system that is also possible so that is the reason why it is called as a plug and play so this is the basic definition of network network is the interconnection of set of devices capable of communication so you can have multiple number of devices any type of electronic devices and it is interconnected together and if we are going to establish a communication between the devices then it is called as a network so this is the basic definition about the network and when you talk about network there are three important criteria that has to be uh, accepted or it has to be focused by this network so here the most important thing is the first one is performance and the second one is reliability and third one is security the performance in the sense that how much time it is taking for transferring a information from source to destination so we know very well that we wanted to forward our information in a faster manner so for that the speed is very very important one of the parameter of uh, that is a network is the speed in which you are transferring the information that is called performance and second down is reliability how much it is reliable so how it is accuracy what is the accuracy of the network so whenever i forward any information that information has to be delivered to the destination without any modification so how i can trust reliability means trusting the network whether my network will provide the accuracy of the system that is called reliability third one is security so what is the security of my data if unauthorized person is trying to access my data whether my system is uh, permitting to access the data then there is no security in that so these are the three important criteria need to focus as far as good network is concerned so in that first one is performance so the performance can be measured i told performance is nothing but the speed in which or the time which is taken for transferring a data from source to destination so this performance can be classified into two category one is called transit time and another one is called as a response time what is the meaning of transit time the amount of time required for a message to travel from one device to another for example there is one source and there is a destination machine in between two routers are there so transferring data from sender to the first router that is the time which is taken from sender to the first router the time that time is called as a transit time and another one is response time the response time is elapsed time between an enquiry and a response so who is enquired for example the destination machine is need some data from the sender so it is sending a request to the sender and after receiving the request the sender will forward the data to the receiver so that is total time for example the same example you take sender is there in between two routers are there and destination machine is there so forwarding information from sender to the first router that is called transit time 
and first router to second router and second router to destination. So the total time making a request and sending a response is called as a response time. So the performance can be purely depends on the transit time as well as the response time. So here this time may be based on different other factors. So we cannot say that only the transit time and response time alone is uh, uh, right uh, directly proportional to performance. There are different parameters or different factors that is need to be considered for this time management. So the first one is the number of users. We know very well that if more number of users are connected in a network and it exceeds the bandwidth capacity, then the system will be very slow. So we know very well that in a network maximum 100 people can be connected. Suddenly 200 people are trying to connect, then the system will slow. So the number of users are responsible for the performance. And the type of transmission medium. So the both end system we are having a supercomputer, but we are having a very poor quality of transmission medium that is a cable or wired or wireless medium, then the transit time will be taking more, is it not? So here the type of transmission medium is also responsible. And another important factor is if our switches or the routers are not a sophisticated router or switches, then the connected hardware, right? The other devices is also responsible to reduce the performance and the efficiency of the software. This is also very important. So we are executing a program. Software is nothing but our program, the user defined program or for example, the routing algorithm. The algorithm is not efficient one. So in that case, the data transfer will take more time. So either it may be a response time or it may be a transit time. So in that case also the performance will be degraded. So when you talk about performance, the transit time and the response time is very, very important. But these timings are purely based on other factors also. Number of users, type of transmission medium, capability of the hardware connector in the network and the efficiency of the software. The second criteria will be reliability. So here I already told what is the accuracy of our network. So whatever the data which is sent by the sender need to be delivered to the destination without any modification or without any disturbance that is called as a accuracy. Here the reliability is also responsible the frequency of failure. For example, any one of the intermediate router fail because of that we cannot able to deliver the data to the destination then we are compromising the reliability and the another important thing is the time it takes a link to recover from failure for example i told sender is there receiver is there in between two router is there so router one is in down state that is it is failed it is not coming up right it is not uh, rectified immediately then what is how it is possible for us to communicate from sender to the receiver so the time taking a link link is nothing but the node which is present in between source and destination the connection so if that is taking more time to coming to upstate then it is also problem and network robustness robustness is nothing but how much we are trusting so if suppose it is compromised Right, we cannot deliver the data on time to the destination. It is working, but it is taking more time. Then it is the accuracy of the system is gone. So that is the meaning of reliability. Not only accurately delivering the data because of failure and it take more time to recover from failure and it is having a network robustness. So these are the responsible factors that will provide us the poor reliability. And third one is very, very important. Still more number of research is going on in the security of the network. So sometimes we are uh, uh, seeing the newspaper that uh, that particular network is compromised. Even the sophisticated networks are compromised. That is nothing but the unauthorized access. The people who are not at all responsible for accessing or they are not given privilege to access the information they are accessing our data then 
our security of the system is compromised so here we need to protect the data from unauthorized access and protecting data from damage and development so that is very very important so because of some problem because of some component failure our data is compromised it is leaked then our system is doesn't have any security and we need to find out the policy who will be the authorized user access our data and what are all the policy for example the end users or the uh, clerk level users they will be given certain policy only they can view the content they cannot do any alteration so uh, next level higher level manager level people can access as well as also can able to modify the data so these type of policies has to be framed to recover from the data losses breaches is nothing but data steal so here these type of policy should be adapted to provide highest security for our network so as far as network criteria is concerned performance reliability as well as security is very very important then the next thing is so what we have discussed is what are the things which is necessary for network next we are going to discuss how we are going to connecting the devices which is available in the network that is nothing but the physical structure the communication between the devices what are all the type of connections are available so as far as connection is concerned here a network we know very well that more number of devices are connected together and the connection is called as generally represented as path or net uh, link a link is nothing but a communication pathway that transfer data from one device to another so for example this is one station and this is a source assume that and this is the destination when you connect these two that is called as a link generally it is represented as link how we are linking or by using which physical device we are going to link that is totally different and here when you talk about uh, the type of connection there are two different category one is called point to point another one is called as a multi point what is the meaning of point to point point to point connection is nothing but a dedicated link between two devices always this link will be available or we can say the entire capacity of the link is reserved for making a communication between these two devices then it is called as a point to point a dedicated connection or the entire capacity of the link is reserved only for making a communication between these two devices for example this telephone communication if a landline communication so to the switch which is available either in bsnl or whatever it may be the uh, the uh, service provider from that agency to our home the link will be the capacity will be dedicatedly given from the agency to our home that is called point to point a dedicated link reserved for making a communication between the devices then it is called point to point the another type of connection is called as a multi point or it is also called multi drop both are same here the advantage of multi point is you can connect more number of stations together by using a single shared link you can see in this example there are three station all the three stations are sharing the link in a the advantage of this multi point environment the capacity of the channel is shared so whatever may be the for example uh, the 30 mbps line is given means there are three stations so this station will take 10 mbps this 10 mbps then this 10 mbps so all three stations are sharing the link capacity of the channel is shared either spatially or temporally what is the meaning of spatially spatially or temporally we will see if several devices can use the link simultaneously it is a spatially shared connection so as far as this example is concerned these three devices or stations is sharing this link so here the number of connections sharing the link is called as a spatial and if the user must, must take time it is a time share for example the i told 30 mbps 10 10 10 like that so instead of that if suppose we are using a time shared connection the 30 mb at particular period of time the 30 mbps will be given to this station first 
after completion of this work then the entire 30 mbbs will be given to this station so after completion of this work the entire 30 mbbs will be given to this station so like that it will be a the entire link capacity will be shared by these three stations in a time shared manner so when this station is using this two station will not be permitted when this station is using these two station will not be permitted like vice versa this station is using means then these two station will be will not be permitted the entire link will be dedicatedly allocated for a particular station in a time shared manner that is the difference between spatial uh, connection or time shared connection so these are the two way in which the communication or connection between the systems or the stations can be established either point to point or multi point then the way in which the systems can be arranged so we know very well there are so many number of stations are available and how these stations are arranged in proper way so that we can establish a without any uh, problem we can make a communication without any uh, disturbance we can establish a communication between the devices so for that we need a physical topology physical topology is something but the way in which the systems which are available in the network has to be arranged that is the manner of physical topology so as far as this physical topology is concerned there are four different types the first one is mesh topology second one is star third one is bus and fourth one is ring we'll see one by one so here as far as mesh topology is concerned so there is a dedicated point to point link to every other node for example you can see so there are five stations and there is a dedicated link between each and every station so this station is connected with all other stations so this station is connected with all other station like that each and every station is connected with all other station so here the total number of link that need to be established is n into n minus 1 so what is the meaning of n n is nothing but number of station and here the number of links we required is n into n minus 1 that means here if you take n values 5 5 into 5 minus 1 is 4 that is 20 links will be there see that if you connect if you see this station 4 4 4 4 4 that is 5 station into 4 that is 20 links are there but here this link will be here we need to use this link for sending as well as receiving so the total number of uh, here we can see that we can the mesh topology need the n into n minus 1 divided by 2 duplex mode links duplex is nothing but what is the meaning of duplex so we can send and receive is it not so we are sharing the link for sending as well as receiving so that n into n minus 1 divided by 2 that is minimum 10 lines are required to establish a communication between the link as far as this architecture is connection concern so here uh, the what is the demerit of this mesh topology so the amount of cabling and other io ports required so minimum 20 ports are required what is the meaning of minimum 20 port 20 lines are there so each each and every station will need one sender and one receiver port. like that it is connected with remaining other so more number of io ports are required io input and output input means sending output means receiving and more number of cable also required so when you have more number of cables automatically the installation and connection reconnections are very difficult and here more number of bulk of wires accommodate more space so more, for example in this example you can see that here a single station having four wires is it not there are 20 wires are interconnecting these devices so more number of wires can be shared between the station so which is also a one of the demerit of the mesh topology then the second one is the star topology it is better than mesh topology because the number of cables are reduced that is the only advantage of star topology here there is a central controller called hub through this hub only you can make a transmission see here here you can see so there are four stations are available 
all the stations are connected with up this is the central controller so there is no direct connection between the stations like in mesh topology there is a possibility of direct connection between the station but here as far as star topology is concerned there is no direct connection between the station so whenever you wanted to transfer any data you wanted to forward your information to the hub by using a hub only it can be forwarded to other station for example this station wanted to establish a communication with this station it wanted to send the station has to send the information to the hub the controller then the controller has to transfer the information to the destination station so there is no dedicated connection between sender and receiver if here you can read this if one device want to send data to another it send the data to the controller which then relay the data to the other connected device so the advantage of star topology is i told the cabling is very very less so that it is very less expensive and each device need only one link so only establishing a connection with the central hub only one io port is enough to making a communication so advantage is less cabling is needed to be housed and robustness one link fails then that alone will be affected so the entire network will not be getting damage so for example in this example if this link is having a problem then other three link will be used for making a communication only this station alone cannot be reached that is the advantage and when you talk about the demerits of this star topology is so here all, the entire station is depending on the hub if the hub goes down it is totally the network is in down state so the star topology is used in local area network alone so for example if uh, here in this star topology if hub fails then we cannot able to establish a communication between the station that is the highest disadvantage of this star topology and third one is a bus topology so it is a multi point right bus topology represent multi point so it has to be shared one long cable act as a backbone and you will be having a drop line which will puncture the uh, main line that is here a tap is a connector that is used to establish a communication with the main cable and it will be connected with the metallic core we'll see this here you can have the very long cable so the starting point and ending point and here you will be having a very long cable and this is called as a drop line by using a drop line you can connect more devices and here the drop line will be connected with tap this tap is puncturing this cable and it will establish a connection so this is the architecture of bus topology so here uh, the important advantage of bus topology is it is very easy to install so it is sharing more number of stations can share the entire cable but what is the drawback is difficult of reconnection and isolation so if there is a problem here then you cannot use this station as well as this station or this station cannot able to establish a communication with this station so that is the drawback of this one that is the first one difficult to reconnection and isolation so where problem occurs identifying that one is taking more time and signal reflection at the taps can be caused degradation in quality since i told there is a puncture will be created hole will be created to make a tap connection if this tap connection is having a problem or it is not functioning properly the quality of the information will be degraded so that is also another advantage it is purely depends on the tap connection and here a fault or break in bus cable stop all transmission i told if there is a problem in one station or one communication tap then the entire communication will be shattered and it is also reflect signal back in the direction of origin creating noise in both direction so the meaning is if suppose i am sending a information from this station to this station so it will be forwarded by using this line if it is forwarded through this line here there may be this station is forwarding some information to other station both will be traveling or using the same cable so which will create a disturbance 
so that the quality will be degraded that is the disadvantage of another disadvantage of bus topology then the last one is called as a ring topology so in ring topology it is a point to point connection that is a dedicated link will be there between devices and here a signal is passed along the ring in one direction from device to device device until it reaches its destination so here you can see this is the ring topology a station can communicate either to this station or this station so each and every station will be maximum it can establish a direct communication between two stations right for example if you take this one so it can able to direct communication with this station and this station so like that only two side communication alone direct communication alone is possible and here each device in the ring incorporate a repeater so what is the purpose of repeater is it is increasing the signal strength when a device receive a signal intended for another device it, its repeater regenerate the bits and passes them along for example for example if you see here this station wanted to send some information to this station so here it will receive the information and it will identify it is not for this station so what it will do is it will call the repeater so that the strength of the signal will be enhanced and it will be forwarded to this station so that the quality cannot be degraded that is the responsibility of the repeater so the repeater will increase the strength and forward to next station so here the main advantage is it is relatively easily to install and configure so compared to other topology the ring topology is having a easy to install and here the demerit is unidirectional traffic what is the meaning of unidirectional for example this station wanted to communicate with this station means then it has to transfer the information here and then here and then here and then here only one direction is possible reverse is not possible only this direction is possible this direction is not possible what is the disadvantage of that it will take more time because it crosses another three station and then only it can able to reach that is one disadvantage and resource will be wasted the link unwantedly we are forwarding information to all other station before reaching to the destination so these are the drawback of this ring topology and in a simple ring a break in the ring can disable the entire network so like the previous one bus topology what we have seen there is a problem in link then total network is collapsed and the weakness can be solved by using dual ring there is a solution but it is very costly what is the meaning of dual ring is we can use this direction also and this direction also so if the, if this direction fails we can use this direction or if it, we we feel that it is taking more time we can use this way also for example this station we wanted to send some information to this station if it is a unidirectional we have to pass three station but if suppose we are using this dual ring we can send here by using intermediately only one station is available so it will reach the destination in a faster manner but the installation cost will be very high as far as ring topology is concerned the last one is you can combine all topology together you can create a uh, that is a new structure physical structure that is called hybrid topology so here we have used star topology as well as bus topology so there are uh, nine stations are there and uh, nine stations are interconnected by using a star topology so each and every bus topology here each and every line will be dedicatedly given for these three stations so dedicated line is also there for these three station and all these stations are connected by using a hub that is a central controller that is nothing but star will be acting as a backbone you suppose this station wanted to establish a communication with this station so it can use this hub central controller and it takes responsibility to forward information for example if suppose this station wanted to send some information to this station it need not contact the controller it can directly send the information and by using this intermediate station it can send the information to this station 
so the this is these are these are the way in which the arrangement of nodes which are available in the network can be done either it can be done by using a what different type of topology mesh topology star topology or we can use a bus topology or hybridization of ring topology hybridization of all topology can be combined together to improve the efficiency of the performance of the system thank you